Hi, good morning and welcome to the ZP Vlog and Podcast. So every Thursday at um, 8, sorry, every Thursday, every Sunday at 8 a.m. London time, we like to give out this vlog and podcast and it's just really a summary of the news from Zimmer and Peacock um, for this week. We do have some um, regular um, listeners and it's quite nice because it, it sets up a dialogue between us and keeps that dialogue um, going. So let me sort of jump into it a little bit. So um, one of the pieces of news that we put out this week was um, that obviously at Zimmer and Peacock we do do a lot of screen printing and you know we do screen printing at scale. What I mean by that is you know we make um, a lot a lot a lot of biosensors and screen printed electrodes and so we were just made a um, recent batch of um, what we call the hypervalue electrodes. I say this with this um, I realize that um, you might not be able to hear me because I haven't actually no I have actually gone live so my apologies for that. Um, so I say it with some hyperbole but um, the reason I kind of say this um, a little bit is because um, I think this this carbon screen printed electrode that we make really is the world's best carbon screen printed electrode. Now being the best, you know, there has to be some context to that. Uh, you know, that, for example, this electrode is made on a polymer. The fact it's made on a polymer means that you can't necessarily use it with um, organic solvents. Now you can put organic solvents upon it, but you couldn't leave this sensor, for example, in a you know, a bath of dimethylformamide, DMF, or THF, tetrahydrofuran, because it would eventually dissolve away. You could use these solvents briefly to kind of cast upon it, but you couldn't really leave it in there. So when I say it's the best, it has to be the best within a certain context. So the kind of context that I think it's the best in is it's got great repeatability, um, a great surface. We use it in a lot of our biosensors. And so it's good for biosensing, good for electrochemistry, but good in the aqueous phase. You know, and somebody came to me and asked me us about the organic phase, then I would um, slightly change um, the message that I was giving there. But yeah, we have made another batch of hypervalue um, carbon electrodes. Um, we're delighted that they essentially sell so fast. And if anyone has any questions, you know, essentially re reach out to us off that, off that. Now, something else that we've put out there this week as well, I think this is quite significant really is and uh, we've mentioned it before, but we do have a really excellent um, program in house. We call it Fish Tag, and it's really about putting a CGM and a cortisol sensor um, into a fish and leaving it there for several months to constantly monitor the glucose and constantly monitor the cortisol. And this will give us a sense of the well being and the stress um, upon the fish. Now, um, We've put some recent images up there because actually the, you know, with every iteration that you do, um, or every, you know, then we're, we're essentially moving to sort of generation two now on that, on that particular product. Um, and it's working really well and looking really good. So we just put some new images out there. So it sort of says, look, you know, we have the entire package from a CGM up to cloud. Um, and you know, we've obviously been doing this for quite a long time and it's nice to see you know, essentially the progression of the technology as we um, go forward. So we did put some news out about um, that this week as well. Um, some other news from Zimmer and Peacock for this week um, is also that, of course, if we're making this total package for um, measuring glucose and cortisol in fish, we've actually ended up making, I did, we describe it as the smallest potential stat. Now, smallest, again, is a relative term. What I then add is, made from discrete components. You can make a potential stat on what's called an ASIC, which is almost like a single chip um, potential stat. And that would allow you to be really, really small. Um, but there's also a lot of risk when making a potential stat on ASIC as well. You know, it's, it's sometimes hard to troubleshoot. They are very expensive to develop. Um, and so when I say it's the world's smallest potential stat, I mean so made from discrete components, but and at the same time, it is pretty small. It's kind of got a, um, the smallest length on it. Sorry, small, its width is about seven millimeters. Its depth is, you know, less than a millimeter. And its length, I would approximate um, to be about sort of 10 millimeters. So it's pretty um, small. And that is, um, you can see images of it on our website um, as well. Now, every Thursday, um, at 8 a.m. 
um, London time. I always get mixed up Sunday and um, Thursday because we do two webinars a week. We do this webinar on a Sunday and we do another webinar on a Thursday. Now, the webinars we do on a Thursday are intended to be, you know, much more technical. Um, and they in inevitably are. I mean, this week we did a webinar and somebody wanted to know about detecting um, bacteria. Um, and I realized that... Um, that you actually wanted to measure E. coli um, and they also wanted to measure um, Campylobacteria um, and also we had some questions about dopamine, uric acid and ascorbic acid. So I have some um, news or information about that, how to do it and the various um, pitfalls um, and it's nice to have these questions. So if you have any technical questions around um, sensing and biosensing, um, please don't hesitate to essentially reach out to us at ZP. And I'm sure we, not sure, I know we will be happy to um, answer them. So we like to answer these questions in the kind of, you know, the, f the format of a, um, of a webinar. So if I go forward a little bit, we do have a really excellent um, sister company or distributor in um, India um, called Technando. And this week they've been um, training up and starting to distribute the chili sensor in India. Um, we do have a lot of inquiries. Obviously, India has a big um, agronomy um, economy. Um, Chilies falls into that. And so we now um, offer that technology in India for testing the hotness of chilies. I'm mentioning the SHU, the Scoville heat units. Um, so just to kind of say, you know, talk about that company and to say, you know, if people are in India and they want to measure the hotness of chilies, you know, this is mostly comes about in production, you know, then we do have the technology in India now and have a trained team on it. This is something that we have mentioned a few times, but we do have a, um, a workshop running um, in September. It's slated for the 14th to the 15th of September. And this workshop is titled um, continuous glucose monitoring and wearable biosensor workshop. Um, it has actually quite a lot of content to it that we're talking about constructing a glucose sensor, monitoring a glucose sensor, constructing a CGM, continuous glucose monitor, running a CGM, um, running a keto sensor, purine cortisol, learning the theory of glucose sensors, learning the theory of lactate sensors, um, and also running lactate sensors, and also talking about the theory of oxygen sensors. Um, so we actually go through like glucose, lactate, um, oxygen, purine. We have an awful lot and we talk about both continuous usage and discrete usage. Discrete sometimes I would kind of call it point of care and continuous measurement is often into the, how would I describe it, um, into the wearable um, type domain. So we, have, we do have a workshop, um, it's in Norway, it's on the 14th or 15th of September and um, we're happy to, for people to sign up and essentially tend it. Um, our engineers um, did something really nice this week. We do have at Zimmer Peacock, I talked about screen printed electrodes earlier on, and, um, but we do have technologies that also allow us to do post batch um, modification of these electrodes. Um, we have a robotic system, for example, that allows us to handle these robots at um, little, fairly modest scale, but we can then post treat these um, electrodes um, as well. So we do have um, the ability to take screen printed electrodes and do secondary processing upon those screen printed electrodes. So um, it was just a nice video that we put out there on YouTube and people, if they're following on on the vlog, they can watch that um, video as well. Now, I think it's kind of finally, this is something that came up that sometimes people want to put discrete components onto um, biosensors. Um, they want to have like a temperature thermistor on a biosensor, for example. Um, and this is possible. You can um, solder discrete components like capacitors, resistors, thermistors. Um, I've seen um power fets put on there so you can um put discrete components onto biosensors um and we just put a sort of little article out about um essentially about that so this week um it's interesting because it's in europe at the moment it's kind of mid-august which is the kind of 
almost like our holiday season so uh, but we've still been pretty busy you know we've still been um manufacturing and shipping our um, hyper value electrodes which i would say by far the world's highest selling um bio sensors out there we have been working on our cgm and cortisol technology so our continuous monitoring and of both glucose and cortisol and we have put that out there as, as a piece of news Obviously, we've actually shrunk down our potential stats to even smaller now. They're less than the half the size of a thumbnail. Um, so they got really quite small. Obviously, if you have any technical questions of ZP, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We do cover this every Thursday, 8 a.m. London time in our webinar. Over time, we've had a lot of inquiries from India about measuring the hotness of chili. And it's always been hard because we haven't had... Um, a unit or somebody trained in the country but that's actually all changed now thanks to Technanda so thank you to them if you are a company or an entrepreneur who's actually trying to develop CGM technologies then I would definitely suggest that you come to our workshop and really for people who are thinking of making point of care um, type devices then some of our post processing technology using robotics might be very um, interesting and then finally um, Biosensors don't have to just have the sensing element on them as well. You can actually put electronic components on there as well. And we do show some um, pretty good images of that um, on the on the website. And we also talk about, look, if you're going to develop electronics for biosensors, then you probably need to have test circuits to make sure that your sensor is actually functioning um, the way that you think it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, wrap up this say thank you very much if you've got any questions with zp on technical reach out to us and we'll answer them on thursdays at 8 a.m london time otherwise we'll just do a new summary on sundays 8 a.m london time and i'm happy to answer any questions okay well thank you very much i will stop now but speak to some of you soon